Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I'm going to do the October announcement for Invisible Cities. I will link the original announcement for Invisible Cities in the description below, as well as some general information that you might need if you're new to this project. Uh, so we always announce the countries two months in advance. So today, as I said, I'm going to be announcing the two countries we've selected for October, which are Guinea and Sweden. So first, with the book for Guinea, uh, I have only one book to talk about because I have pretty much decided to read this one because I'm planning to buy it. It is called The Radiance of the King by Kamara Lay and translated by James Kirkup. And it says... At the beginning of this masterpiece of African literature, Clarence, a white man, has been shipwrecked on the coast of Africa. Flushed with self-importance, he demands to see the king, but the king has just left for the south of his realm. Traveling through an increasingly phantasmagoric phantas phantas landscape in the company of a beggar and two rowish boys, Clarence is gradually stripped of his pretensions until he is soiled, sold to the royal harem as a slave. But in the end, Clarence's bewildering journey is the occasion of a revelation as he discovers the image, both shameful and beautiful, of his own humanity and the alien splendor of the king. Uh, so this is published by a new New York Review of Books, uh, and they're one of those publishers that I've been wanting to read more of, and what I've read from them, I've really enjoyed both Magdis Bow and more recently uh, the Peruvian author uh, Ribeiro uh, that I read a short story collection that was published by them. So I'm excited to pick up another uh, book from their catalog, and I read a little bit of a sample of this and liked the sort of the the style of it from the beginning. Uh, so this is the book I've selected for Guinea. Next of the Swedish part of this video, I am planning to do a uh, Swedish book recommendations video in the next week or so um, to give you some uh, recommendations of books that I've enjoyed um, in various genres. I'm sort of planning that uh, still, but I think uh, it will probably be a sort of a mix of type of books that I read and really enjoyed and would recommend. Um, and I kind of want to do a massive TBR, um, but I have selected just a few of the books that I think I might be reading from my shelves and closer to the date I think I might do a bit of a library haul slash TBR for October. These are just a few of the books that I have on my shelves as potential books I could read for October for Sweden. This is a collection of Yarma Sadebay's short stories um, and I've read, I think, a few of his short stories in uh, the Novelix uh, editions, um, which I recommend checking out. They have uh, a few of their things, I think, are in English translation as well. Um, Yamasa Rabai is one of those authors I really enjoy, and I would love to read more from him. He was sort of active in the turn of the century, beginning of the 20th century, I think, uh, in particular, and this, as I said, is a short story collection by him. This beautiful edition is uh, The Immigrants, I think it is, by Wilhelm Mubari. Uh, this is about, is a, I think, a quartet of books. Um, and it follows a family moving from Sweden to uh, America, to the US, uh, in the, again, beginning of the 20th century, which was something that happened a lot in those days, uh, because Sweden was very poor at that time. A lot of people from Sweden uh, immigrated to the US, and um, it's even like a joke in the, the Titanic movies, and uh, there was a lot of Scandinavian um, passengers on the ship. Uh, but it was a very, um, a lot of families moved in this particular time and this follows that one uh, such family. All of these books that I'm talking about I think have uh, English translations, I will link those versions below. Uh, the next one doesn't have an English translation yet, but I know that it's going to come in the next year or so I think. Uh, and that is Usebul by Maurits Kepler. The author basically uh, interviews uh, and talks to, listens to uh, all of the people living in this tiny village in Sweden and this is sort of an oral history of that village of the people living there and it's it becomes kind of a mix of poetry and nonfiction. Uh, I know that it actually won the August Prize for fiction uh, for the fiction category so it's a bit um, even in Sweden, it's sort of 
there's a sort of confusion as to what to categorize it as uh, but I'm seeing it as an oral history, a reportage kind of thing with a po poetic form. A lot of the Swedish books that I have on my shelves are classics because that is what I've been most interested in historically. Um, and this is going to be a reread for me. It is The Many Adventures of Nis Holgersson or something like that in the English by Selma Loglöv. I've talked about her before because I've been reading uh, a biography about her recently which I'm almost done with and definitely will be done with by the time October arrives. Uh, this is probably her most famous book. It is a children's book uh, following this young boy who travels all over um, the country and uh, it was sort of created as a way to teach kids about uh, Sweden and its flora and fauna and that kind of thing uh, and its culture in various uh, places of the country. Lastly for this uh, little section of my TBR is uh, They Will Drown in Their Mother's Tears I think is the English translation. This is by Johannes Anjuru. I get the sense that this is sort of dystopian in uh, in nature. I don't know much about this but the reason I decided to recently buy this is because it's been hailed in Sweden as one of those one of the best books to come out in the recent years. It's been everywhere in top lists and uh, nominated or even won uh, won the August Prize for fiction. I've been seeing it everywhere and I really wanted to try Johannes and Yuru in general. So those are the two countries that we have selected for October for Invisible Cities. I would love to know if you have any plans for these two countries and what you would like to read. Um, if you have read any of the books that I mentioned in the English translation or in the Swedish, I would love to know. Uh, or if you have any recommendations for the, these two countries to me, uh, I'm always open for those. Um, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. As I said, I will be doing a Swedish book recommendation video in the next week or so, hopefully, and probably do a, a bigger uh, Swedish literature TBR for October uh, because it's the perfect excuse for me to finally sort of tap into that and to um, borrow some books from my library as well. Uh, so that is all I wanted to say today. I hope you're doing well and you're taking care of yourselves and I will talk to you soon. Bye!